Harry's wife. Part 94.13. Family? No. Oscars? Hell yeah. Hello. I'm H.G. Tudor, continuing to educate you about narcissism, its many facets and dynamics, using the prominent example of famous people. I continue to use the series of Harry's Wife, as she is such a prominent example of narcissism in action that it would be remiss not to utilise her for the purposes of education. We turn to the Daily Mail with an article by Stephen Wynne Davies and Jack Wright. As always, I leave it for you, the educated viewer, to determine the veracity of the news article. I merely provide you with the interpretation based upon the information that's presented. The headline, Harry and Harry's wife are being lined up to present the Best Picture Oscar next week, despite both pulling out of Prince Philip's memorial service in London. Before we get into the meat of the article, let's just examine that headline in itself. First of all, the failure to attend Prince Philip's memorial service in London. Prince Philip, of course, was Prince Harry's grandfather, somebody that he was reasonably close to, certainly at least until along came a spider and pulled him away across the ocean. He is not attending the memorial service, and of course, it is no surprise to find that Harry's wife won't do so. She is not going to embrace her extended family because they're painted black and they are perceived as an unconscious threat to her control generally in terms of the facade and also specifically over the intimate partner primary source that is Prince Harry. She, of course, maintains her iron grip upon the ginger prince, most of the time ensuring that he remains under control. Therefore, by cultivating the idea that there is some kind of security threat from white, middle-aged women that could seriously cause them harm, that they, she has convinced Prince Harry that they ought not to go to the United Kingdom because it's a seething nest of vitriolic vipers that are out to do them down. Of course, that is not the case, but there are a lot of people who dislike them purely based upon their own behaviours. Notwithstanding this, irrespective of what you might think about the people's views about you, the simple fact is, this is your recently deceased grandfather, and a memorial service is being held for him. And under any other circumstance, a member of the family, particularly one that has access to privilege and wealth, would readily attend the service. And the fact that Harry's wife doesn't attend is no surprise, because the strength of feeling against her in the United Kingdom means that her narcissism instinctively recognises as an overall threat to control, so she's not going to go there. She, of course, can't have Harry do so, and therefore she concocts this idea that there is this security threat, and her manipulative grip upon him remains pretty firm, so that he swallows the story and also, having head turned by her and his emotional empathy for his grandfather reduced by her manipulative behaviour, he similarly does not attend. This demonstrates to you, of course, the absence of emotional empathy and the need for control on her part, but it also demonstrates how Prince Harry has become tainted by her manipulative powers. Accordingly, they are not going to attend the memorial service for Prince Philip. However, there is the suggestion that they would be turning up at the Oscars instead. So it's quite all right to wander along and embrace the A-list with all of the shiny happy people there and turn your back upon family. This, of course, comes as no surprise, because in the deluded world of Harry's wife, where she believes that she has been a resident of Hollywood for a number of years, that she is an A-list to herself, that she acquires the character traits or has attempted to do so of those A-listers, she very much believes that Hollywood is her environment. She believes that she belongs there, and that everybody there, from Oprah to George Clooney, through to other actors and actresses, are close personal friends of hers. The delusion causes her to believe this. The Oscars 
is a huge draw for somebody like Harry's wife. It enables her, of course, to assert control by triangulation, by showing the world, look at me, I'm very important and popular, here I am at the Oscars presenting an award. Worship me. It also allows the receipt of fuel, as many people react, many thousands if not millions respond to her appearance in some shape or form, the people in the auditorium, the people online, the people in the press, all providing fuel. It goes towards that manufactured facade of being an important and caring person. Therefore, the Oscars is hugely important to someone like her. However, the simple fact remains, it appears on fairly good authority that they actually have not been invited. Information has been circulated by certain people in the know who've seen the seating plan, and Harry and his wife have not been invited and are not attending. Why then is there this suggestion, as reported in the mail, that they are being lined up to present the Best Picture Oscar? Quite simply, this is once again the activities of the PR machine, Sunshine Sachs, acting on behalf of the diktat for Harry's wife in order to keep her in the public eye, in order to try and maintain relevance for her, because that, of course, unconsciously pursues the prime aims. Her narcissism drives her to seek that control, fuel, character traits and residual benefits, and it does so through her, mainly in two main channels. Namely, I am a bananatarian, I care and I'm empathic, and also, I belong with the A-listers. And therefore, it creates a delusion in her world that she is this humanitarian, that cares very much for people, that she's a defender of the oppressed. And it also creates a delusion that she's an equal of those people in Hollywood, that she has the same level of fame and talent and ability of those individuals that she's entitled to move amongst them. Her narcissism creates this delusion in order to motivate her to unconsciously pursue those prime aims. If it did not, she wouldn't function. The narcissism causes the narcissist in lots of different ways to feel and think in order to motivate the narcissist to pursue those prime aims. It might be fury, it might be hatred, it might be infatuation, antipathy, jealousy, envy, an entitled stance. It varies dependent upon circumstance, but with Harry's wife, her narcissism has two modus operandi, in terms of the world generally, namely humanitarian and member of the A-list. Both of these things are a delusion. We see with the humanitarian activity, it's mainly gestures, words, and the activities of other people, using other people's donations, using, for instance, the nappies supplied by Procter & Gamble. With regard to the A-list, she isn't a member of the A-list, has never been, and is a mediocre actress at best. But that's never going to stop her narcissism. She is very much a legend in her own lunchtime, and her narcissism drives her to seek these things. Accordingly, the instruction is provided to the PR agency, or somebody at the PR agency comes up with this idea in order to facilitate her need for prominence, to suggest that they are going to be attended, attending, and the rumour machine cranks up and suggests they're going to be there, and they're chalked down to present the Best Picture Oscar. This, of course, creates headlines, the Mail Online and others reporting on this, which allows the assertion of control and, of course, the drawing of the fuel. If, of course, they do actually attend, then the prime aims are catered for even further. But even if they do not, the mere instance of the rumour and the suggestion has allowed the prominence to appear. And, of course, this is commensurate with the way that Harry's wife functions. It's all about the words rather than the actions. The article states, Prince Harry and Harry's wife are being lined up to present the Best Picture Oscar next week despite both pulling out of Prince Philip's memorial service. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex were said to have been approached at the end of last year, but it is not yet known whether they have agreed to attend the event held at the Dolby Theatre in Los Angeles on Sunday, March 27th, just two days before the London service. According to reports, Harry and Harry's wife had initially been lined up to present the award for Best Actress in a nod to their work on women's rights. What's that? But the plan was scrapped after Kristen Stewart was nominated for her role in Spencer, a film about the life of Diana. Now, interestingly, mentioning Diana, 
you'll know, of course, from parts past them, that Harry's wife engages in the Diana duplication, the character trait acquisition of the late mother of Harry. But there's a complete contrast. Diana wanted to genuinely help people, exhibiting her considerable empathy. Yes, she wasn't shy of the headlines, of course, she liked the publicity also. But she was motivated by wanting to improve the lives of people, that she would go to the hospital shaking hands with AIDS patients, that she would go and visit the sick and the injured and the infirm, and she was genuinely interested in those individuals. Of course it was reported, but she did the action first and the reportage came afterwards. She didn't announce where she would be turning up, she went and the press followed. Contrast that with the behaviour of Harry's wife, when do we ever see her going around a hospital ward? When do we ever see her going out there looking at a minefield and talking to the victims of people who've been harmed by mines? We just hear her talking. A quick Zoom call here, a few words issued through a statement on the Archwell Foundation site. Words, words, words. But the actual doing? Well, the doing is to turn up and collect awards. The doing is to turn up at ceremonies where she can court all of that fuel. But the actual hard graft of rolling up the sleeves and getting stuck in there, spending time with the great unwashed, no, she doesn't do that. And that is a complete distinction with the conduct of Diana, Princess of Wales. Returning to the article, it tells us, a source told the Sun newspaper, it would be seen as a final kick in the teeth for the royal family if he did. He's too nervous to fly to London without police protection, but happy to stand up in front of a huge live audience at the Dolby Theatre in Hollywood. Not great optics. This demonstrates the contradictory behaviour of Prince Harry as a consequence of the malign influences of his wife. It comes days after Harry confirmed he won't be attending a memorial service for the Duke of Edinburgh at Westminster Abbey on March 29th but said he will be attending the Invictus Games at The Hague in the Netherlands next month in a bizarre joke video which was pilloried by royal experts who said his grandfather would have given him a clip around the ear and told him to grow up. And also perhaps mentioning to him, no offence to the Netherlands, but orange really isn't your colour, ginger bollocks. The decision not to attend the service comes after the Duke took the government to court over its decision not to provide full police protection when he visits Britain, his lawyers saying that Harry doesn't feel safe without the protection of Scotland Yard officers. In a promo video for the Invictus Games, which appears to have been filmed in his $14 million Californian mansion, Harry told his team he really wants to get this right, before putting on orange sunglasses and a hat and ripping off his hoodie to reveal an all orange outfit. Pointing down to the camera, he then tells his Invictus colleagues he's ready for the games. Former royal chef Darren McGrady, who cooked for Princess Diana, no, Diana, Princess of Wales, commented his grandfather would have given him a clip around the ear and told him to grow up. The Queen will be devastated, and Princess Diana, no, Diana, Princess of Wales, would too if she were here. Experts had predicted that Harry would not attend Philip's service of Thanksgiving after his lawyers last month told a court the prince does not feel safe in the UK without the protection of Scotland Yard officers during his ongoing legal battle over security. This essentially is an excuse that's being rolled out, concocted by his wife, in order to assert control over him and prevent him from going to the United Kingdom. Royal biographer Angela Levin slammed the Duke as a child stamping his feet over the decision and said the move was tantamount to blackmail, warning Harry could use dropping out of major events at the last minute as leverage to secure personal protective security in the United Kingdom. Levin warned that though Harry had snubbed the Duke of Edinburgh, really he is snubbing the Queen, who is still grieving the loss of her husband of 73 years, and was only given 15 minutes advance notice of Harry's announcement. He's got this all wrong. If he comes over a royal event, he gets police protection. What they won't do is, if he goes out with friends, he gets security. He'll probably use the same excuse to try to get out of the Platinum Jubilee celebrations, she said. And indeed, it's likely to be the case that will ensure that this machination of Harry's wife has the effect of keeping control over Harry and keeping him away from those adverse perceived influences from the members of his extended family. It's all about me, 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 rather than going out of his way for his grandmother and showing he cares. He's behaving like a child, stamping his feet. This is the diminution of his emotional empathy, precipitated by the manipulative behaviour of his wife. The Daily Mail's royal editor, Rebecca English, says the decision has been seen by Palace Insiders as a slap in the face to the Queen. Within a couple of minutes of announcing that he would not be attending the Duke of Edinburgh's service of Thanksgiving, Harry's team also announced that he would be attending the Invictus Games in The Hague in April, just a few weeks later, she said.
This has obviously surprised a lot of people. To travel to Europe to go to that, but not to his grandfather's memorial service, has, to use a well-worn phrase, got people's goat. They feel it is a slap in the face to the Queen and again another PR disaster, as, many, as far as many people in the United Kingdom are concerned. The Mail on Sunday's editor-at-large, Charlotte Griffiths, believes that the move could have even more profound implications. There is this feeling that this could be one of the last chances he gets to see some of the older members of the family, she said. It feels so insensitive and so vitriolic and so pointless. This demonstrates again the impact of the narcissist upon an individual causing them to behave in such a way that draws significant criticism and causes them to behave in a manner which is unpleasant, lacking thought and is hurtful. The suggestion, of course, that they will turn up for the Oscars appears to be part of the PR campaign, and the failure to turn up for his grandfather's memorial service demonstrates the hold that his wife still has upon him, causing him to behave in a manner which draws criticism, but he still can't see it, and if he does comment about it, of course, his wife will just say, this is what we escaped from, them trying to control you, Harry. I saved you from being trapped. And he continues, driven by his own emotional thinking, to buy into that. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.